Alrighty, well, good morning everybody. Well, uh, I just started uh, watching this uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z review. I got maybe like a minute or two into it, and I'm like, you know what? Hmm. Maybe I should make a commentary video out of this. I mean, definitely not saying they're like dead wrong or anything like that, but it just, the thought occurred to me, hmm, why not do a commentary video on this? So, so that's what I'm gonna do. Who'd have thought? Matching one of the most iconic action anime of all time with one of the best fighting game developers in the business turns out to be a good idea. Dragon Ball Fighter successfully adapts the fast and thrilling pace of a Dragon Ball fight into a 3 on 3 2D fighting game built around a beginner friendly combo system and some of the most gorgeous and true to the source um. cel shaded art styles around. Yeah, um. And now that I. I don't. Not too sure I agree with the be, the beginner friendly. Um. Oh God, what was I gonna say? Oh, I I don't really want to say beginner friendly as much as I want to say more modern. Or, or a con, you know, more more console based. I'm I'm guessing the harder. Because I've never really, I mean, especially as of recent, I, with the exception of maybe Street uh, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Edition, that's the first one that comes to mind. <clears throat> but um, most other, I mean, most other fighting games I've tried, they're they're actually not, they're not exclusively bigger beginner friendly like it's not like uh it's not a game like uh probably my all-time favorite 2d fighter footsies you know that i mean yeah that's a uh... anyway i'm kind of i'm kind of rambling on here so but basically there's i mean there's a lot of these games out especially ones these days that are beginner friendly i think that is to say is um they don't they don't leave you in the dark like a lot of these have a training mode I mean, they're not not all the training modes are perfect, but at least they have that in there so you can do you can do something, you know. And I think a lot of these uh, with a lot a lot of these games already have tutorials in place that teach you how to play the game. And uh, again, with um with few exceptions, again, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Anniversary Edition first comes to mind. Um, they're all gonna ease you into it. They're all gonna ease you into the game, so it's not a. I mean, it's. It's not, you know, it's not a, how dare you call my favorite 2D fighter beginner friendly or anything like that. It's just, it, I think it's an outdated term these days. Because again, a lot of these uh, fighters, they have tutorials, they have training modes. So they're, you, they're not just going to throw you in at the deep end. I mean, they're going to, they'll ease you into the game. So kind of a misnomer. Rock the dragon. Despite the visual chaos, Dragon Ball Fighter's mechanics are actually deceptively simple and easy to learn. Okay, yep, that I definitely agree with. Um, I mean, heck, you could um, I believe you can mash. I mean, it's got, it's got four different basic attacks: light, medium, heavy, and then um, projectile. I I don't, I don't know what they call it in game, but your um, your number four is your um, your your base, your normal special attack, like a, you should do, like on Goku, it'll shoot, he'll just shoot a fireball, but on any one of those, like, you can, you can, mag, you can keep hitting the light button over and over and over, and you'll, you'll do a basic combo, but all you'll do, though, is just a basic light combo, it, you know, it's not, it's not going to deal as much damage as, say, if you do a, if you do a more advanced combo, but you kind of get the idea, though, you can, you can basically you can button mash in the game, and um, you'll you'll do fine. And um, and this is pretty much as far as I got when I first when I first watched this, but um, you could do some pretty advanced stuff in this game, um, but I'll more on that later probably. There are just four attack buttons, no complicated special move input commands, and no dragon punch motion. 
Um, yes. Um, Shaolin versus Wu Tang, another game that I played some time ago, was like this as well. It's got motion inputs, but all it's got is the down to forward and then push an attack button type. Also called the fireball slash Hadouken mode. The fireball slash Hadouken motion. So, uh, so but any, but yeah, that's, but just like Shaolin and Shaolin versus Wu Tang, that's all that's in here. Just the, the just the down to forward fireball motion. No, no Z motion. No half circle. No, no complete 360 or anything like that. Or no down to back then down to forward or anything like that. And then circle, 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 square, square, triangle, 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 square, square. You know, nothing complicated. Just down to forward. If you can throw a fireball in Street Fighter, yep. you can perform just about every yep. single move and technique in Fighters. Yep. That's great, especially since you're required to handle three characters at once. Yep. Um, that's probably uh, one drawback to this game, though, is uh, it's a team-based fighter, which I'm, I'm not a real big fan of. I have a hard enough time with just one character, let alone three of them. So, too bad they didn't take a page out of the Skullgirls playbook and uh, give you the option of having three normal characters or having just two characters that are 50% more powerful or playing with just one character that's three times as powerful. I mean, that, which, I kind of wish they'd have that in this game. Because, because again, I have a hard enough time with just one character, let alone three. Oh, and uh, before I continue on, I'm going to have a can of, uh, or I'm drinking V8 Energy. Orange pineapple flavored. The one place where its simplicity goes too far is that each character has two damaging auto combos they can yep. execute yep. by just mashing either the light yep. or medium attack button. That's I just yep, I just said that. Yep. Um And uh, I've only I've only I've only experimented with it a little bit. But um I think once you hit the uh, once you hit the second or third hit of that auto combo, you're locked into that auto combo. Like you can't cancel that, you can't cancel that auto combo into something else. But again, I've only experimented on this a little bit, and this th those are the results I found. If um if you could can if you can cancel those if you can cancel the auto combos, that would actually be a pretty awesome feature to have because then it's it's almost it, there's almost a killer instinct aspect into this game where uh killer instinct you can just sit there and i think you can hit like you can mash one button and you'll do like two or three hits and then you can just mash another one and then you'll auto you'll you'll go into that part of the combo but you, you kind of get the idea but yeah that again he is right though um the game has auto combos and you can mash buttons but if you could uh if you could cancel that auto combo into something else that actually would have been a nice feature to have in this game. But, uh, no, it, you're, once you start it, you have to finish it. Add on to that the ability to use a safe on block homing attack that can quickly close the distance and enable those auto combos to land, and you have a. Um. Partially true. It is, it is easy. You're, you're super dashing in with the press of one button, but coming from a Guilty Gear Strive. I think that something like that should be mandatory in all fighting games. Replace, you know, being able to keybind your dash ability to a single button. Um, instead of having to sit here and tap forward twice or tap back twice, um, you can do that in this game, but it's actually faster to just hit the uh, super dash button. Um, but I, but again, I kind of get what he means here. It's a, it's a very safe attack. I think, um, I believe you can block it. You can block it, and if you do, um, it leaves them wide open and get punished, though. So, I don't... I'll just, I'll just let him continue. A system where low-skill tactics are very effective. A down-heavy attack can punish those homing attacks, but it can be tricky to time, especially if lag is involved, which makes it frustrating when your opponent decides Another to drawback. Move. Another drawback. Um, it's got, um... It's got a classic delay. It's got the uh, delay netcode. It's like, it's like old. It's like 
a little outmoded, a little outdated these days. Um, everyone's going with the uh, rollback, which based um, I, it's I it's gonna it be a very very difficult to explain the difference. And um, speaking of that, I just fucked up. Hold on. Yeah, I forgot to turn that down. Oh well. Anyway, delay and rollback. Um, delay. If there's a some kind of connection issue between you and him, basically everything freezes. You know, everything freezes, and then all of a sudden everything just catches up. I think that's how delay works. Rollback. Um, the game kind of, the game is supposed to predict, supposed to predict what you're gonna do next. And um, if you don't do what the what the net, what the game predicts, it um, I think everything freezes up, and then moves back to where to where the error occurred. I think I went through the same thing when I was playing Fantasy Strike. Fantasy Strike has rollback. I mean, you can sit here and um, uh, you can do like you'll you'll do your attack or do your whatever, and um, if something goes wrong, everything just freezes, and then. Whoosh, Goes and then um and then rolls back to where the error occurred. But um, but if you're um, even then, if you're um, if you're playing somebody like clear across the other side of the planet, you're still gonna have the tremendous lag and all the the best netcode in the world ain't gonna help you much. So. But when you're matched with another player of the same skill, Fighters is fast, fluid, yep. and surreal. Yep. There's just something so incredibly yep. satisfying and so uniquely Dragon Ball about combos like this. Yes. The roster of 24 characters is pretty great. Oddballs like Ginyu earn their spot on the roster with unique mechanics, such as summoning members of the Ginyu Force, yes. or Nappa's ability to plant Cybermen that eventually grow and fight. Yep. What? Developer Arc System Works has found a great balance between making each character similar enough that they're easy to learn, yep. and also adding enough depth and yep. nuance to yep. give them their own distinct yep. feel. Yep. Um, all, I mean, all the characters are going to have the basic combos and they're all going to have the same basic um the same basic special moves as well but uh aside from that they all all the characters kind of do their own different things and stuff and um i i'm guessing uh, other games i would think other team-based games would have this but uh before you start each battle you can choose you can have uh, one of your team members jump in and assist you I believe at any time, as long as you're not being attacked. And um, you can uh, select what kind of uh, what kind of assist ability that your team members can bring with you, like um, for Majin Buu, the big fat purple puppy guy. Um, you can you can set his assist move to something called Fat Throw, where basically he throws a bunch of his fat and it'll it'll bind you up, keep me from doing anything. But you can um, you can select that as his assist move. But, uh, but stuff like that. But you can you can basically preload all of your abilities before you can, before you start the match. But yeah, that, that's kind of kind of it was kind of what I was saying a few moments ago. Everybody has their own basic combos and specials. It's universal for all characters. But uh, after that. All the all the characters can do different things, so. In the single player campaign, Fighter's lengthy original story involves an invasion of mysterious clones and the sudden appearance of a new character in Android 21. It starts off fine, but yep. by the end of the 10 to 12 hours of the slow moving and derivative yep. plot, I had all but checked out. Yep. And clearing out weak clone fighters between important fights feels like. Yep, and um. One other thing, the story mode really, really, really needs, and um, I've only seen Final Fantasy XIV nail it here, is um, oh God, I wish I knew the name of it, but you could um, you could set the text to auto scroll, 
for lack of a better word, you can um, you can set the delay between the um, between the dialogue moving forward. Like if you set it to if you set it to ten, that means uh, in in ten seconds, the the dialogue is automatically gonna move. It's all, excuse me. It's automatically gonna move forward one, or if you set it to one, it's like every every uh, every like two or three seconds, the dialogue is gonna move forward automatically. So you don't have to you don't have to sit here and push the button over and over and over and over and over to keep the dialogue going. But yeah, I really wish this game had it because story mode suffers or the story mode dialogue it suffers from. Uh, I want to say piss poor arrangement. Like um, your your block of text, blah 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 blah. You push the button to move the dialogue forward. Next block of text. Period. 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 That's kind of a waste. You know, then you have to put you know push the button again. Next block of dialogue. You die. You know, two words. Okay, I'll push the button again. That's why either. That's why this game really needs what Final Fantasy XIV has, the, the, the auto-scroll. So. Like padding. Sure, you can level up and earn new skills, but their benefits are hardly noticeable once you're in an actual match. Yes. The real reason it's worth playing for Dragon Ball fans is the special fan service conversations before a match. Yep. Pairing amusing oddball combos like Gotenks and Captain Ginyu treats you to laugh out loud funny moments. Yep. Seeking those out were That's something else I noticed too. Um I could probably I could probably cheat and just go on and look um like go on the wiki or something like that. And um if you have um if you face this battle here with these certain members in your team, you'll see this uh, special cutscene that you wouldn't you wouldn't have seen otherwise if they weren't on your team. So there's there's that. But again, that'd be uh, that'd be almost cheating if I did that. So, but yeah, that was something else I noticed about story mode. Far more fun than the actual story. What? Did you just call on Captain Spider's life after he spent all that time thinking him up? Are you kidding? That's nothing. I can strike an even cooler pose. If you want to test yourself against the AI, Fighter's unique approach to arcade mode is definitely the way to go. As you fight through specially themed teams of fighters. Yep. I've only, I've only, I've only cleared arcade mode one time, but yeah, that, that was something else here too. You can, um, you can actually choose different paths, like on the fly, like, um, I don't, I don't know how well you can see it here at the bottom, but, um, there's a, it's like a, it's like a pyramid. You start with one battle, then it branches into two, then it branches into three, branches into three, and then it branches into four, and then five, etc. But yeah, and during that time, I think if you hold up or down or whatever, you'll actually, you can actually change your path, so. You're grade after each battle, which dictates the path that you take, either high, middle, or low. It can be extremely Didn't know that. to try and remain on the high path the whole way, which gives you something to strive Okay, so it looks like I was wrong about that then. I didn't know that. But yeah, even then, that's still a pretty neat feature to have in arcade mode. Usually it's, most most games, it's like one single path and that's it. Um, then there's uh, Mortal Kombat. They kind of do it differently. You can choose, uh, choose your destiny. And you get like one of four different, you got like easy, only has like five battles. Medium, seven, nine, you know, etc. But yeah, so they kind of do it a little differently. But yeah, that... Didn't, yeah, I didn't know that in this game, though. For as you play. The downsides are that there's no way to restart a losing match, and sometimes difficulty spikes can be huge from one match to the next. Yep. The most charming parts of fighters can be yes. found in the lobby. Yes. Your chibi avatar yes, I totally agree with this here, and this is probably one of the biggest reasons why, at the, mo um, at the moment, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is probably my favorite 2D fighter, second only to footsies. I think mean, the game... The, the game footsies will probably always be my favorite 2D fighter. But yeah, I think it, uh, originally, for me, it was a two-way tie between the Black Heart and Shaolin versus Wu-Tang. It was a tie for second. Now, 
there are tied for third. With uh, this game here being number two. This is one of the biggest reasons why right here. Because uh, most other online modes that I've seen, it's basically just a list. You know, almost like a crate. It's like a, a fighting game Craigslist. You know, you post, you know, you want to you wanna start a battle. You know, you, you post it up and you sit around and twiddle your thumbs and you wait for somebody to select your match and then away you go, you know. Or or you can uh, join somebody else. You can join somebody else's fight that they have posted, you know, that kind of thing. But that's it. Just nothing more than a list. Here, in this game, it's like a it's like a really strong MMO aspect to it. You know, because um, you can, uh, you know, it's like you guys saw a few moments ago. It's this big old map. You just run around. You can uh, interact with other players and stuff. And there's uh, there's other stuff you can do. Like, all the stuff you can do on offline mode. Like practice mode, I believe arcade. That kind of thing. It's also available in online mode too. So, and uh, you can even, uh, you can even challenge, uh, you can challenge people in the, that's in the same lobby as you. You can challenge them to a match just like that right on the fly. So you can do that as well. World of Warcraft has that as well with their dual system. You know, if you're in town or whatever, just challenge some random schmo dude to a duel. Just right there on the spot. You can do that in this game too. So. Car can interact with other players through emotes and stickers, which you can find more of in loot boxes. While loot boxes are almost always terrible, they're actually not that bad here. Fighters is... Um... Yeah, he... I, I think he's probably going to say what I was thinking, too. Loot boxes, in general, are very bad for a game. But, um... Very gen In this game here, it's not that bad. Because they are, for the most part, cosmetic. There's no, um... To my knowledge, there's no stat boost or anything like that. The only exception that I can think of is for, uh, story mode. Story mode, but you've got to pay a shit ton of uh, in-game currency in order to unlock them. You can um, set your story mode character at level 100, the max, but that's the only one I can think of, though. Nurse with its in-game currency, and by the time I had completed story mode, a few runs of arcade mode, and some combo challenges, I'd unlocked a ton of stickers, more titles than I would ever want to choose from, and all but seven avatars, all without spending a penny. As far as online play goes, my experience has been about 50-50. Yep. There were times when it was so smooth, I might as well have been playing yep. against someone right next yep. to me. Yep. Other times, yep. it was an infuriating lag fest that would usually end yep. with a disconnect. Yep. That's something we have to hope Arc System Works will stabilize soon. Yep. Yep. But again, um... Um... I... I... I think I talked about this earlier. They used a uh, delay-based netcode, which is um, which is, it's outdated now. It's old. They need to upgrade to rollback, which is more effective. So, but yeah, I've had that happen. Like uh, I did a match with uh, with one guy. I think the delay was like around five frames or so, but whenever uh, more people got involved. Then it just ended up being like anywhere between 10 to, or excuse me, no, it was around 10 or 11 frames. So yeah, it really bad. So between the accessible auto combos, homing attacks, and simplified command inputs, Dragon Ball Fighters is an inviting gateway into the world of fighting games for newcomers, whether you're a Dragon Ball fan or not. Those easy controls can open the door to some spammy behavior. But just as often, it's satisfying in a way that does right by the Dragon Ball name. Dragon Ball Fighters has enough depth and complexity to glow okay, brilliantly that, as a Super Saiyan. Okay, that's what I was about to say. Um, at least, at least in my mind, at least in my mind, simple and beginner friendly doesn't always mean a bad game. I mean, accessibility doesn't always mean a game's gonna suck. I mean. I mean, I'm no, I mean, I'm no, I'm no fighting game pro, but like, it's, you know, going back to what I was saying uh, some time ago, my all-time favorite 2D fighter is Footsies, and it's a game that's played with only left, right, and a button, and a, an attack button, and that's it. 
but it's still my all-time favorite. Um, Fantasy Strike. If not for the uh, god-awful, cringe-worthy aesthetics, that's one of the biggest reasons. I it, It's an accessible game, but it, it, mechanically, it's one of my favorites. I guess, uh, I guess simple to simple to learn, but hard to master is. I think that's what I'm looking for. I mean, this is a team-based game, so you gotta you gotta play with three players. So you gotta you gotta work on the interactions and stuff like that. So there's, I mean, there's a fair amount of there's a fair amount of plates you have to keep spinning. So, and now uh, now that I think about it, something else that I noticed too. Um, I've been playing throughout uh, throughout my years playing MMOs. One thing I learned about it is uh, there's a they often try to strike a balance between between complexity and awareness. Okay, this but this is something I said years ago, so I kind of have to rack my brain to bring this to try to remember all this. But um, a simple class like a paladin. Um, I'm kind of referring to the, the, the tank roll, but, I mean, the Paladin was one of the easy, what, as far as, uh, mechanically and rotation-wise, as far as, uh, you know, the buttons you gotta press, they're actually one of the simpler classes to play. But, uh, Paladins are also, um, they're also one of the most team-friendly. Like, they can, um, Paladins, unlike other tanks in World of Warcraft, can heal other players. Uh, and I believe they can cleanse the buffs from them, and I think they can even revive some of them from the dead. So, so mechanically, as far as the tank roll goes, they don't have very many buttons to press. They're a very easy class to play. But um, the problem comes when uh, when some of the party members start taking a lot of damage, um, when they get they get massively debuffed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then that's when the awareness has to kick in of how their party members are doing, and they have to go and heal them up. Then, um, on the flip side, um, the monk class, or the monk tank, is like the opposite. They have a whole, or, I think the, the death knight as well would fall into that category. They don't require much awareness, but they're, they've got a whole lot of buttons they gotta press. They got a whole lot of plates they have to keep spinning. So, it, it's a pretty complicated, those are complicated classes to play, but they don't, but, uh, most of what they have is selfish. They're not very, um, they're not a very party-friendly class, which now they're free to, you know, work on their complexity. This game kind of strikes me as that as well. Now, I've only played this game for, like, a week or two. So, but this, that's, they're, they pretty much, um, nailed what I was trying, they pretty much nailed what I was trying to say. The control scheme, not that complicated, not that difficult, but once again, you're playing with, uh, it's also a team-based game, so you've got three players. So you and you can you can swap them in and out um, for the most part on the fly. So so again, so now not much complexity, but now that it's made you know now what or what it lacks in complexity, it makes up for in awareness. So I mean, and, and there's also um, the air aspect too. Uh, my again, my favorite two D fighter, footsies. It's just a ground-based, you know, it's just a ground-based 2D fighter. Um, the Black Heart is probably a little more, is probably a little more complex than uh, Shaolin versus Wu-Tang. Because uh, you can do, um, the Black Heart, you can do air combos and stuff like that, so it's a little more complicated. So, I mean, but, um, you, you, but uh, Black Heart, I think there's only, uh, Joystick, obviously, and I think there's only, uh, there's only four buttons. Yeah, there's only four buttons. Whereas this game here, there's basically there's basically eight buttons that you got. So, but e anyway, you guys get the idea. And um, I'm kind of I'm kind of bab 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 babbling on here. So I'll just go ahead and cut it off here. But thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, see you all next time. Bye for now.